connected to the space station. This is Third Rock, and this is Innovation Now. Smart materials have revolutionized industry by helping produce better products. Now, NASA's trying to make smart materials even smarter. This is Innovation Now, bringing you stories behind the ideas that shape our future. Smart materials are a nickname for materials that are engineered versions of natural substances with certain enhanced properties. Carbon fiber composites are one example of a smart material. The flexible, incredibly tough glass known as Gorilla Glass on your tablet or smartphone is another engineered material. So what's next in the world of these smart materials? Can they get even smarter? NASA has been working with a substance called ferrofluid, which is a liquid that contains microscopic particles that respond to magnetic fields. When you magnetize a ferrofluid, it forms into various solid shapes, almost like something alive. Even today, ferrofluid shock absorbers can be found in high-performance automobiles. Researchers want to see what else can be made from ferrofluids, and to do that, they run experiments on the International Space Station, where the microgravity keeps the fluids properly mixed instead of settling. In orbit, observers can see what happens when you pass the fluid through pulsed magnetic fields. The particles align into customized patterns that have various mechanical and electrical properties. A material that can change instantly from liquid to solid can have a lot of useful applications. For Innovation Now, I'm Jennifer Pulley. Innovation Now is produced by the National Institute of Aerospace through collaboration with NASA. You're connected to Third Rock because no one knows more about discovering new rock. Based on documents leaked by Edward Snowden, Scott Pelley details this year's other winners.
deepest into the Earth's shadow. So you can see that the uh, moon um, has a uh, nice red color now. And as we've been talking about, this is because of the light from the sun being refracted by the Earth's atmosphere and hitting the moon. And as the, moon, as the light goes through the Earth's atmosphere, the uh, bluish light gets scattered away. Um, and uh, uh, what you're left with is the light that is toward the red end of the spectrum. So that light hits the moon and gives it this nice uh, red color. Now, you'll see that uh, one part of the moon is uh, a deeper red or darker color than the other. So that is, there's a gradient across the, uh, the moon, um, one part darker than the other. That's because the part that is darkest is nearest the center of the Earth's uh, shadow. So that's where the uh, left least amount of the Earth's light uh, gets to the moon. So uh, it is darker there. And then the, the parts that are near the edge of the shadow uh, get a bit more of the Earth's light refracted uh, into it. So you can see it uh, better. Now, from looking at this, it seems like some clouds might be covering part of the image. Hopefully it's clear skies and you can see it with your eyes. You should certainly go out now if you do have clear skies and, and have a look. Um, it will continue for uh, a while longer. Um, the full eclipse ends at uh, 4.23 uh, Eastern Time. So. Uh, about a half hour from now, uh, we'll still continue to have the, uh, the eclipse. So as it progresses, uh, you'll begin to see one side of the moon start to brighten up. That'll be because it'll be starting to come out of the Earth's uh, shadow. And then eventually it will come out and you'll see the inverse of the you know, procedure that we've had before, where you'll start to see brightening and it'll become very bright as it uh, leaves the Earth's shadow and only part of the uh, moon will still be covered by the, sh the shadow and that partial phase will then progress uh, in the opposite direction from what we've seen earlier in the evening until the, uh, the partial eclipse ends uh, at 5.32 uh, Eastern time. Okay, so uh, we're just uh, past mid-eclipse now. Um, so this has been an update of this lunar eclipse coming to you from the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama.